Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the punishment number of an integer. It's kind of a weird term. I don't know if that's like commonly used in math or something, but anyways, we're given a positive integer n. So it takes a second to actually like wrap your head around what exactly this problem is asking for. I'll try to make it clear. And then we'll mostly spend most of our time on the coding portion of this video, because I think that's where a lot of like the complexity comes in. Even if you know what you're trying to do, the details can be a little complicated. Consider 10. What we want to do is go through every number from 1 to 2 to 3 all the way up until 10. These are sort of like our candidates. Each of these numbers, we could say it could be represented with i. For each of these numbers, we're going to take that number i, and we are going to compute the square of it. So we could have 1 squared, 2 squared, and keep going. For a particular number, suppose 1 squared, which is equal to 1, we can take parts of this integer and then sum them up to get the original integer, not i squared, but just i itself. So this first example doesn't do a great job of telling you what we're talking about. I'll show you a couple more, don't worry about that. But in this example, this number gets a check mark for us. Uh, let's consider 9, which is also going to get a check mark, and I'll show you why. So we have 9 like one of the numbers between 1 through 10, we square that number, we get 81. Now, there's all sorts of ways to partition this string. Suppose it's in the form of a string, which is pretty easy to do. Suppose it's a string, we partition it, meaning you either like take the entire string, that's 81, or you partition it like this, where you put 8, and that's just an integer, plus 1, just an integer, and then you get 9. And so, it seems that there is a way to partition the result, which is 81, such that we get the original number 9. Not 9 squared, but 9 itself. So this will also get a check mark from us. Very quickly, um, 10 will also get a check mark. We square it, we get 100, and we can split this where we take this, which is 10. It's not 100 because we are not including the last digit, it's just 10. And then we take this as well, which is just zero, add those together, you get 10. 10 is what we started with, so this one also gets a check mark. And these are the only three numbers from 1 through 10 that are going to get check marks from us. Everything else will not. I'll show you one example. Imagine uh, we have 4, we square 4, we get 16. Well, I mean, it's literally impossible for us to sum these digits or partition this in such a way where we will sum up to 4 because we already have a 6 and can't really go any lower than that, so it's not possible. You can imagine that like, we could have like multiple digits, like if we had like some number x squared, it ends up being like 1234 or something. The way to partition this, there's several ways. We could take 1 and maybe 2 and then 3 and 4 and add all those up, or we could take uh, the first two and then partition the rest. There's a lot of ways, and I'll get into the details of how we're going to implement that. But anyways, now getting back to what the problem is actually asking for us. So what we did, we're given the number n equals 10, a positive integer. That's the only thing we're given. So we went through all the numbers, 1 through 10, to figure out which one of them satisfied uh, the condition that they talked about. There were three numbers that satisfied that condition. And so what we will do is we are going to sum up not the individual uh, numbers, not 1, 9, and 10, but the squares of those numbers. So 1 squared plus 9 squared, plus 10 squared. We're going to add those numbers up, and it's going to total to be 182. And so that, finally, is the punishment number. That's what we would end up returning. The good news is about this problem is that basically you can just run like a simulation, sort of a brute force solution to solve it. The code's actually pretty reasonable, so I'll get into that uh, now. Well, I guess uh, before we get into the code, there's one last step that I kind of didn't talk about here. If we're given uh, some number, like we had some number i and we squared it and then we get some integer. I'm just making this up so I don't think this is an actual a square. But if we had like 1, 2, 3, 4, how do I get all of the partitions of this? And I know I didn't spell that right, but how do I do it? And how do I do it relatively easily? Well, there's all sorts of ways to do it. I think one of the easier ways to do it is recursively because kind of the nature of this partitioning is basically like a backtracking problem. I'll code it up in a pretty easy, relatively non-backtracking way, but still, the logic is going to be backtracking. So basically, think of it like this. This is the entire string that we're given. We want to try every possible partition. So we'll branch like this. We will actually have 
n different branches. The first branch will be this, just one. The second branch will be this, 12. Next branch will be this, one, two, three. Last will be the entire thing, one, two, three, four. This is a terminal node, we can't really go any further, but now this one got a bit more interesting. Now, since we used the first three characters, the only last character we have left is gonna be uh, four. And so this is also a terminal node. So this path here would return the number one, two, three, four. More importantly, I guess it would just check uh, if that matches the original number i, and then it would return true, otherwise it would return false. And this branch, a bit more interesting, it would take the sum of the values. So 123 plus four, which is gonna be 127, is that possibly equal to i? If it is, return true. If it's not, return false. So we'll do that with all of these. Just to quickly fill out some of the rest of this here, we can have like the choice three or three, four. If we pick three, then the only left choice is four. Here, we could do two, uh, two, three, and then the other one would be two, three, four, and I won't fill in the rest of this, but you probably get the idea. So in terms of like the code, I could talk about it and I'll briefly talk about some of the variables we're gonna use, but mostly it'll just be easier to show you the code. So we're gonna have a few things. One is gonna be I, which not to be confused with this, uh, I guess we could call it J, but it's gonna be the index that we are currently at. We're also gonna have a number, which I'm gonna call the target, but it's really just gonna be equal to the original number that we were given, which is i, not i squared, but i. So remember that the target is what we're trying to create with each of these paths. Is there at least one path such that we can partition the string to equal the original number? So we just want a true or false answer. We're also gonna be maintaining a current variable, which is gonna be the cumulative sum of all the numbers that we've kind of seen so far on a given branch. The base case is gonna be when we reach one of the terminal nodes and the current value is exactly equal to the target value. So that's mostly it. We're also, of course, gonna be passing in the string representation of i squared into the recursive function. But other than that, I think we can get into the code now. So most of this code is gonna be very trivial. It's just the recursion that's gonna take like a little bit of thought. We're gonna have our result, which is gonna be the punishment number. And that's what we're gonna return. We're gonna simulate this. So we're gonna go from i starting at one up until n, but we need to make it n plus one to actually stop at n. And then we're just gonna check if we can partition this number. And if we can, we will add to the result not i, but i squared. It's kind of confusing because when we check for equality, the target is gonna be i itself, but we're taking i squared and adding that here. Okay, now let's actually implement the uh, partition function. A few variables that I talked about, one is i. Maybe I shouldn't use that, maybe I should use j, but I think you probably get the idea. i is gonna be the index uh, for the string that we're given. So a couple of parameters, cur, which is gonna be an integer, target, which is gonna be an integer, and string, which is gonna be a string. I don't have a creative name for that, but anyways. So the base case, pretty easy. We just checked if we've reached the last uh, index, if we're out of bounds rather, and if the current integer is equal to the target, well, then we're done, then we can return true. Otherwise, we're gonna have some branches. How many? Well, it's gonna depend on the loop. So here, I'm gonna do, I guess for j in range, starting at i, and going up until the end of the string. So now this is the recursive case. We're gonna check if we can partition the remaining characters. And if that's the case, then we return true. If we never return true from any of these, well then we can return false. Okay, now last thing to do is fill this in. I definitely encourage you to try to fill this in by yourself. Feel free to pause the video if you have to. But uh, let's see the parameters that we have. So currently we're at J. What that means is we're taking the prefix starting from i. So like in Python, I'm doing slicing here. So we're starting at i, going up until j. We do j plus one because this is non-inclusive in Python. So it'll start at i, end at j. So we're checking this prefix starting from the original index that we were given i can be a part of the partition. Like this is just one of the choices that we are considering right now. So if that's the case, this is what we should do. In here, we should say j plus one because j is the last character that we used. So we will start at j plus one. And I guess I probably should have filled in the partition down here uh, before I get into this part. So uh, let me actually do that now, I'm sorry. 
this is pretty easy. We start at index zero, so i is equal to index zero. Our current value also starts at zero. Our target value has to be i, like the number that we're actually considering right now. And lastly, the string itself is just going to be i squared, but it's not going to be a number. We want it to be in the form of a string. We probably didn't even need to pass this in. We could have just converted it inside of the function, but I think it's slightly more efficient to do it this way. Oh, and this is actually not the function. That's just the word string. So this will convert it into a string. And so now for filling this in, it's mostly straightforward, I think. Current was initially zero. We're just taking this number and adding it to current. It's a string, so let's convert it into an integer first. String starting from i up until j plus one. So we take that and we add it to whatever current value is given to us. So just like this, the target will not change and the input string will not change either. We could have changed the input string, but I think that would take extra memory and just doing a little bit of slicing inside of the function is a little bit better, I think, rather than having every single string in memory for the entire function call stack. Um, but we'd pass in target and pass in the input string. So this is the entire code. I will go ahead and run this now. And you can see here it works and it is pretty efficient. The reason that there are some solutions that are a lot more efficient than this, in terms of big O time complexity, I think this one is actually optimal. There just happens to be a couple other solutions that I think have like a better runtime. But I think for coding interview purposes, this is probably the better solution in my opinion. I think this is a little bit more readable. But anyways, if you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.